Hi guys, Joseph here today. We're doing another video on my 2003 Saab 95 Aero Hot. And today, I'll be showing you how to replace the rear brake pads. Yeah, so these are the brake pads here, so I'm going to pull one out for you. Open these up. It's got the Saab key on these. Cut it for me. There you go. And you open up, and what you expect to see inside is just some rear brake pads right here. A set of four. So here they are, guys. These are your rear brake pads. There's a set of four here, so I'm going to leave them in these packaging for now, and that's all you get. And right guys, let's get down to the car right now. Right guys, before we start jacking this thing up, first, before we start anything, make sure your transmission is in park. Or if you have a manual with these Saab 95, make sure the key is out and the car's in reverse with these Saabs. In a manual version of this, you have to put it in reverse to take the key out. Obviously, I make sure mine's in park because mine's an automatic. So now, even though that transmission is holding the car, if the lock was to fail, this would roll back if the lock in that was to fail. So you need to put a wheel chock under the front wheel. So I'm going to pause and go and get a block of wood. Right, guys, another thing before doing your break pads check your brake fluid reservoir so on here you open the bonnet there you go you come round the front you get look for the cut there and lift up check your brake fluid this is an important thing here Make sure it's not going to overflow your Brakeford Reservoir. So look, so between the half, it shouldn't overflow when we start. So, for now, we can drop the bonnet. Because that will fill up when you start working here, so I'm going to pause. Alright guys, we're at the front of the car, so now we get the wheel chock. And put it under the front wheel. And now, if your transmission lock pin was to fail, this ain't gonna roll back into you because you do not want this rolling into you. Hey, right guys, one thing I wanna say to you quickly. If you're doing your brake discs, I'm putting the parking brake down, but we're not doing the discs, we're just doing the pads. So you can leave that. So that's just one thing I wanna stress out for you quickly. Yeah. With cars, guys, normally I'd say put it in first gear in a manual, guys. Because with these subs, to take the key out, you actually have to put it in reverse, so that's what I'll do. Just so you know, guys. So now I'm gonna get started. So, first, we're gonna jack this up. So, I'm gonna pause here. Right, guys, before you start jacking this up at all, you've got to break the wheel bolts free. So, first. We gotta open up the boot and the Americans call it the trunk. So I'm gonna pause. I'm just finding the key here guys, so this car actually has a locking nut here guys. Which is a locking nut. So that's saying we're gonna have to get out the boot here. So obviously for this car the locking nut is actually in the boot, so I was gonna open the boot and the Americans call it the trunk. That was a bit slow working there. All I have in the rear guys is some transmission fluid. Just to throw it off the side. This transmission fluid is actually for the Volvo guys. That's another film we're going to be making guys. It's obviously manual transmission fluid. The Volvo is a manual. 
And now, lift this up. It's a cool feature with these, you actually can lift these, so that's what you're going to do. It brings you to spare tyre. With the keys in here, and that's, that's where I'll sleeve it. Hey guys, here's the locking now. This is important, so that's what we got. Now we're gonna drop this back down. Now you can drop the boot for now. This is important, so this is what we're going to use to undo our lock now. If you don't have the key, you cannot take your wheels off. Yeah. So yeah, if you have a locking nut, you have to use this to undo it. There's a locking nut right there. So now guys, I'm going to go and get the breaker bar and find the size to undo that. Right guys, so first we're going to break this lock nut free. Well, this locking bolt. So sure that's on there straight because I do not want to... I'm gonna hold. Alright, well, guys, got that one broke loose. I'm just gonna. With these lockers, don't be afraid to like. Just treat it like on the It's a 17 millimeter on these cars. It is. Not had the wheels off of this in it. Sometimes these can be difficult to undo sometimes, especially if you're garage, you've had this out, use an impact gun or a tire shop, use an impact gun to tighten this. This one really doesn't want to come. That one really doesn't want to go. If that's the case, put it there and step on it. doesn't want to go. I really don't. Ah, uh, that isn't good. That doesn't want to go, so I'm going to pull. Okay guys, go with the five wheel nuts. Wheel bolts, I meant to say, broken loose. Now, we got to jack this up. I'm gonna have a look under here, guys. So I'm not really familiar with the jack points on this car, so I'm gonna have to have a look, guys. So I'm gonna pull. Right, okay, guys, so I'm looking under here. There's a try of jack here. You got the all right sort of extension on the end, maybe. Because if you're looking, I cannot jack up on this the spare wheel carrier because that just goes straight through. That's not gonna hold the weight of the car. I do you see the wishbone down there, so I know I'm going to get the jack right down there. That's the challenge here, guys. So, yeah. Because we've got to go right over to that wishbone there. That's the only bit that's really going to support the whole car. I don't feel like I'll, I'll cross this, the, this here. Well, trust this. I don't think that's thick enough. So, yeah, I'm going to have to pause until I find my jack point. Right, guys, because you've got to be careful where you jack under here. Because if you jack it up wrong, you can go through the car. This is quite serious. I don't think that there's anything wrong that can support that wood on the jack. You are a bit restricted in your, in this, this isn't jacked up. Yeah.
Right guys, that's one side, now I'm going to go off and do the other side, so I'm going to pause here. Right guys, I've got all the wheel nuts, and this wheel is frozen on there, so what we're going to do is, I'll get one back in, I'm going to thread one in, and I'm going to try and wiggle, wobble this side to side. I'm going to try that. I think it's badly frozen on. That ain't bad. Yeah, that's a good this ain't coming off. This ain't. This is a very big hit. There you go. That's what you have to do if your wheel's froze on it. Hit it with a hammer. Don't hit the uh, alloy wheel. So, now. So now, now that we know what's that applies from here, guys. This was badly frozen on. It, this was bad, frozen on there. But guys, sorted it now, we can get it off, at least. Fronts aren't frozen on, it's just the rears, because these wheels haven't been off in ages. So now, now finally the wheel will fall off. Ah uh, guys, this is it's real rough. I'm not even going to try and take the brake. There you go. This looks terribly rusted on. Now guys, here we go from here. We've got the frozen wheel off. It was also frozen on the other side too, so now Wheel is so you don't know how to spin it. Now I'm going to, have to get a screwdriver to get this anti rattle spring out before we can go any further than this. So I'm going to have to pause here. Right, guys, now I'm going to get this anti rattle spring out. Anti rattle. Right, guys, to get it off, do a little primary. There you go. Give it a little tap on the top of the screwdriver. Then the they do serve a purpose, these rattle springs, because they actually do stop the calipers rattling because now they're a little rattly when you drive. Now you can hit this thing a little bit. Now guys, I'm gonna have to pause here and get round the back. So I'm going to mount to you guys. Right guys, to keep going here, we've, I've actually put, I've to put a 12 point socket on. Here so I've got the, I can't undo the slider pins because that's a 7mm a Allen, which is H7, and I don't have one of them. So I'm going to take the whole caliper off, that's what I'm going to do as a solution for that. You know, I still can do the brake pads without doing that, so that's what our solution is. So I'm going to undo this, these, this 12 points top and bottom so that I'm going to be back right guys I've got the bottom nut out of the caliper bracket guys here's my issue with this work the guy that works on this has used far too much Loctite on this it's not the removable Loctite it's a non-removable so it's made this real difficult you're supposed to use blue Loctite not red Loctite <laughs> That is the non-removable type. There you go. Here's the whole caliper's loose, and I'm just going to sit it up here. So I'm going to have to pause here and mount you. Right guys, I needed two extensions here, so I'm gonna get I'm running out of strength here. 
future. Alright guys, I'm just gonna get this off. Got them both out. You already have them dead. This don't even want to come out. This is... What do you think the soil breaks in, Chad? Terrible. Easy? Easy no. Job? Very difficult. Guys, I don't think these brake pads have been off since this has been new. I'm trying to pull this in a bit. What's holding it? There's nothing holding this. There's no reason why this shouldn't. Like, I think you feel like it, don't you? Sure. Right, guys, we're getting there now. Give it a bit of a pry. There we go. There we go. No strain on that brake. All right. Don't stress the brake line at all. And we'll be fine there. So now, let's get our brake pads out. Ah, gosh, she's a frozen in as well. Now nah, these don't want to come out. One come out, easy. Let's have a look at this. Get the old pad out. There's the old pad. Look at that meat on that. That is not much left, guys. We nearly want a backing plate. What's, what's that? That red stuff there. I don't know what that is. You know what that red stuff is? It's like Grease. Looks like blood to me. <laughs> it's a cup of grease, Joe. Yeah. This other pad is, is welded. This one's literally welded to the caliper. This caliper's, this pad's welded. Oh no, it isn't. Oh, you are marking it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, guys, to get this pad out, this is how you get these pads out. They're a little frozen in like this one. Give it a little tap like this. It's going. Here we go. There we go. Pad out. Now. Give me the issues here. So now, we need to get a screwdriver. Because now, we've got to push this back. So I'm going to have to pause here. Right guys, now we've got this out, we're going to pull the slider pins out. There you go. That's useful. No, there's no way to that now. Still, don't let your calipers hang. I'm going to leave it to sit here for now. There's the main bit. So you don't have to undo these Allens here. These H7 Allens. And I don't have a H7 Allen key. Anyway. So there you go. You've got to clean these points. And this is where the pads slide up and down. So yeah. There you go. So I'm going to pause and we're going to go and clean these. Right guys, now we've got to get this surface rust off here. And remember guys. Do your brake pads in pairs. And remember. This, this is side specific, so this is the left side, that's the right side. But remember, keep to the correct side. So I'm going to pause and the, use this wire brush up and down here, so I'm going to pause here. Right guys, here's the clean I've done, so I've been using a file and wire brush. Do the wire brush first, then you just run a file up and down like that. Until it looks really clean like that. Okay. And I'm also going to work on this side. Okay. Right guys, I've greased all this up, greased the slide pins, I've greased it all down here, and now guys, it's time to slide it back in. 
quite greasy. If you don't like getting your hands greasy, then this is definitely not a job for you. I might use just silicone grease. So I'm going to have to hold here. Right guys, I've just got... Slide that down. There you go, guys. Now, choose a hand to use for greasing the back of these brake pads here. Here is one of them, right there. I'll use the, my left hand for hand that I've had in. So, right. So, there, can I get some grease? What's that say? I want to rest that down like that. It's it's enough dirt as you listen guys I was about to say this do not get grease on this braking material because it you'll ruin it if you do that so don't do that so I'm gonna grease the whole rear of this don't worry about that so now get some around the backing plate here Nice coverage. Go around the front here. That's as far as you can go without touching the braking material. So now I'm gonna try and almost forgot, gotta do this as well. Now, got to. Right, guys, I'm just we're finishing off now, guys. Got the pads in, but I stopped because I had a job getting them in. Took quite a bit of force to get these in. So now, guys, it's time to pick up the caliper. Guys, I was, I was talking to viewers, Dad. Start tightening it in. Using this breaker bar. 12 point socket okay. do a ratchet actually flat over yeah right guys for now we're going to use the ratchet to tighten it for now Snug for now, so I'm just gonna do the bottom one in as well. It's in 
importantly grease all this up properly is because if you don't the brakes aren't going to work properly. Because guys you need your brakes and you need them to work. So yeah I'm going to pause while I tighten up the bottom. Right guys now finally we're going to put on the spring clip. Right guys, got the anti rattle spring. I, I did actually cut myself because I was trying to put this on wrong. I will try to get it on in this way because for me, I was, I was actually doing this Philip wrong. That's if you're wondering. Now guys, it's now time to put the wheel back on. So I'm going to pause here and actually put it on and I'll just show you the talking out because it is raining a bit. So I'm going to pause here. Right guys, got the locking nut in. So now. Right guys, now, when you do that one, go to this one, and if it... Right guys, when you've done this one, do that one. I forgot to mention that the torque spec for this vehicle is 81 foot-pounds. <laughs> yes. If it doesn't come out, guys, it seizes out a lot. Just turn this the other way. There you go. Then you turn it again. There you go. There you go, that's it. They're all taught to spec, and also, finally, we're going to do the locking nut. It's also a 17mm on the key. The reason you can turn this to go the other way, torque wrenches, for left hand threaded bolts. There you go. There you go. They're, they're all taught now. And now, guys, we can lower the car down. Right, guys. Got jack stands out. I'm going to go and pull the other one out and then we'll drop this to the ground. So I'm going to pause here. Right guys, now we're in the car, you just put the key in the ignition. So now, we're going to start the car up. a little test drive now so I'm gonna pause here
Right guys, we're on the test drive. Right guys, we'll see how, see how our brakes feel since you've done the drop, guys. You made such a good job on the rear brakes. Well guys, <laughs> listen, the brakes aren't going to work well for 100 miles when you first put them on, guys. It won't be that effective for your first 100 miles. For the first 100, 200, 100 or 200 miles, they're not going to work that well, guys. Cool. The reason it is, guys, is because you need to let your brakes bed in so that it can take a while for it to work. When you, you need to let the pads wear in a bit. Yeah. It'd be a bit ineffective, guys, for the first 200 miles. But with cars, guys, your car relies on the front brake more than it does the rear, so your front brakes more than the rear guys. First 200 miles of brakes will be all right, guys. They will work. You said 100. For the for, yeah, guys. For the first 200 miles of driving, they're not going to work very well. They won't be like very. The sharpness won't be there, guys. For the first 200 miles, they will work, but it just won't be as like, sharp. Yeah, it'll be it'll be sharper after 200 miles of driving. You got to let them break in a bit. Don't go too like harsh on the brakes for the first 200 miles because you've got to do the braking procedure of the brakes, guys. But yeah, just so you know, guys. Yeah. I don't know what your kind of thoughts are on these modern cars, guys, but I think their headlights are far too bright. Cars. Yeah, Actually, the LED lights on modern cars are just annoying, they are. That seems to be a like, problem, like that Mercedes that just went the opposite way there, guys. See how bright them lights were? I don't know if you know, you can see the makes at night, guys, and what it looks like. Like on that red van there, the, the, the lights are right, they're okay, it's not too bad. Oh, Guys,
have the safety there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely not the original colour, Dad. They don't do these 70s in purple. They don't do them in that colour, so that's not the original colour, though. No. Yeah. Looks in good nick, though. I don't know if you, the viewers say it. I don't, I, don't know, I don't think you guys saw it, but I did see a Volvo V17 purple parked up, guys. That's what I see. Brakes feel right, guys. Except they will improve, guys, after a hundred miles. So, right, guys, I'm, we're gonna pause now and go and end off this video. So, I'm gonna pause here. Right, guys, we're gonna end off this video. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing. So you don't miss any content like this and have a nice day.